Hey everybody, welcome back to another video on PE Seismic Review. Today we're going to be talking about non-structural components, specifically the anchorage of non-structural components. Before we get into it, I just wanted to remind you all that I have a website at www.structural.wiki. So if you're looking for more sample problems or the solution to this sample problem, if you wanted to download that, uh, I've got a quiz on there. Uh, it's a 15 question quiz with uh, completed in-depth solutions. I think it would be a beneficial for anybody that's studying for their PE exam. Uh, and I have some blog posts on there just about general structural design. So feel free to check that out. I've got an email list too for updates. I hope you find this, uh, this content beneficial in your studies. So back to the problem. This specific problem falls under section four of uh, the board's study plan that they put out for the seismic principles exam. <clears throat> And uh, the problem pertains to an HVAC unit, which is anchored to a concrete roof slab on top of an apartment building. It's anchored with four wedge anchors, so we get two on either side. Uh, and so the anchorage for the unit is meant to resist tension associated with the seismic force F sub P. That seismic force F sub P is calculated based off chapter 13 of ASE 716, which we had, a, uh, we had another video on calculating the seismic force per chapter 13. That's the non-structural component seismic force. Uh, and so it's given here in this problem statement, and we're just going to use that to design the uh, anchor for the maximum tension. We're just looking for that maximum tension in this problem. Uh, so what is it? Right. Well, they've given us the weight. They've given us the height from the anchorage point. And they've also given us the strength load combination that we should be considering. Now on the exam, I don't know if they're going to be giving you uh, the load combination you should consider. So I would definitely suggest getting familiar with the various load combinations and knowing uh, what's going to govern in this situation uh, for a strength level design. We know since we're going 0.9 times a dead load of 0.9 times a weight, that's less de dead load, less weight to resist overturning, more tension, and so that's going to govern this design for tension, right? So getting into it, this problem is fairly straightforward. Uh, we've got a moment here at the base, moment M, and that moment is due to that force F sub P. That moment is going to result in a couple, which is going to be a tension and a compression on the other side. We're worried about the tension because the tension is what's going to pull up on the anchorage, right? We can calculate the tension using the lever arm here, D, that it's a quote unquote lever arm, just the distance between the anchorage. But we've got to also account for the weight because the weight's going to help us out a little bit on the tension. So we're going to go ahead and calculate that moment. So we've got that moment as equal to F sub P times H sub CM, height to the center of mass. It's equal to three kips times 1.5 feet. And so that's just equal to 4.5 kip foot. Okay, so pause there. Before we go on to calculate the tension, we always got to remember something when we're talking about uh, anchorage, connections, cords, collectors, uh, 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 certain components of a diaphragm. When we are talking about uh, these certain pieces that are transferring seismic load that we don't want to act ductally or we don't want to deform. Uh, these are the pieces that we don't want to be designing for that reduced seismic force that we get when we consider the response uh, modification factor for the deformation or the ductility of a system. We need to be looking for that overstrength factor, right? So just to quickly recall, F sub P is calculated as 0.4 times the amplification factor, times the design spectral acceleration, times the weight, and then it considers one plus Z over H for the elevation, right? And then that all is divided by the response modification factor and then divided by the importance factor for the component, right? So in calculating F sub P, the value they gave us, they did consider the response modification factor for the amount of deformation or ductility that this particular unit or this particular non-structural component can absorb and, uh, with regards to uh, its, its energy absorption capabilities, if you will, right? So there is a reduction when you initially calculate the F sub P, but we got to go back and we have to apply an overstrength factor. So if you head over to 
the table at chapter 13, ASCE 716, chapter 13, table 13.6-1. Uh, and you look up a track, you're going to find an omega factor, or an overstrength factor of two. All right. So now we can calculate the tension. We're going to consider that overstrength factor and we calculate the tension. So how do we calculate the tension? Well, the tension is just going to be the moment, right? Moment's 4.5 kip foot. So the moment, and that's going to be divided by that lever arm two. Okay. And then minus our weight. Oh, let me back up a bit. Missing something. Minus 0 0.9 times our weight because we are considering 0 0.9 times the dead load divided by 2 because the weight's going to be, we're just going to assume that the weight is distributed to either side of this, right? We're going to divide this whole thing by 2 because we got two anchors on either side, okay? And we're going to multiply that by omega. Okay, I'm just going to make a little bit more space here. When we do that, we end up with some tension load, and that's equal to 1.35 kips. That's B. Okay, so just quickly stepping through it one more time, we've got a seismic force. The seismic force causes a moment at the base of this HVAC unit. Okay, we calculated the seismic force. We remembered that, hey, when we when that seismic force was initially calculated, they considered a response modification factor, right, which considers the uh, deformation capabilities, energy absorption, the ductility capabilities of a system. So it reduces a seismic force, right? Uh, we now have to apply an overstrength factor when we're talking about a connection or an anchorage to concrete, uh, and that has to be resisting the full seismic force. And by looking up in table 13.6-1 from chapter 13, we can get the overstrength factor for an HVAC unit. We took that overstrength factor and we multiplied it by the tension, and we calculated it, we calculated the tension by taking the moment divided by the lever arm subtracting out the weight on uh, the weight to either side, and then dividing that by two, because again, we have two anchors on both sides. We have four anchors total, two anchors on both sides. We come up with a tension load of 1.35 kips. Yep. So that's about it uh, as far as this problem goes. Uh, if you're looking for the written out solution of this, something that's a a little bit more cleaner than my handwriting, feel free to head over to uh, our website, www.structural.wiki. i uh, got a lot more problems on there, as I said. I hope you found this beneficial. And if you have any questions, just feel free to drop a comment and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible.